Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Mark Price here with DevSlopes.com, of course. And we're going to take our Node and Express skills to the next level. So what we've done so far is we've worked with get requests. We've created a simple server. But the next thing that we need to do is be able to have the client post data to the server. So we've sent data back from the server with a get request. Remember, get is like you're fetching something. But if you want to post something new or create something new, use a post request. So let's go ahead and work with that. Let's pretend that we're building uh, an ingredients app. This is a web app or mobile app where basically you, you have a list of ingredients that you always want to store. Uh, and if you need more ingredients, you can post more. Maybe you're going to the store and you need to buy some stuff. Maybe it's a shopping list. It could be anything like that. So what should we do? Well, first things first is we probably need some type of list. Uh, this is, of course, JavaScript, so we can write straight here. So I can say var ingredients, and I can create an array. Now, if you're wondering, well, Mark, would we put the data here in, in the server? I mean, is this the best place for it? Well, no, it's not. Uh, typically, you get data from a database, like MongoDB or MySQL. However, we don't have the database yet, and we haven't learned about that yet. So we are going to do it right here in the code, which is fine for now. And some things are stored locally, like if you have permanent stuff you want to put here, that's fine. And so what we're going to do is have an array of objects. These are like ingredients. We're just going to give them an ID. That, that name doesn't mean anything. It's just kind of like a unique identifier, you know, so we can put whatever we want here. Like, let's pretend that the client automatically generated this when it posted it up. And then the, uh, we'll say the text. So this could be eggs. Okay. And then we'll put a comma here and do another one. And you want it to be the same format, of course. Okay. And we'll say text is going to be milk, a comma, and uh, we'll just do a couple more just, just to make it look like a list. ID is equal to seven there. All right, and text equals, let's say bacon, one more, ID, okay, and then a comma. And so what we have here is an array that stores a list of objects or an array of, of JavaScript objects. Okay, and we're going to say frog, frog's legs. So we have four items in our list here. A list of ingredients is an array of objects. This looks good. Okay, so what we want to do is let's just get rid of this here. And whenever someone just hits the regular, um, the default endpoint, let's send back the entire list of ingredients. So let's just say response.send and ingredients. And what's really cool is that we can, it'll convert all of this uh, into JSON. But we need a little bit of help in order for it to do that because we have, um, it's starting to get a little more complex here. It's not just a plain string. And, um, and we're also going to be receiving data from clients. And so we need to better handle the management of our data parsing. So there's a package that you're pr probably going to use every time you work with Express, and it's called Body Parser. Okay. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go to our terminal and go into this project. So mine's my desktop and CD first API is the folder that it's in for me. And what we're going to do is we're going to say npm install dash dash save body dash parser. Okay, it just allows us to send and receive JSON uh, and manage nested objects and things like that. It is now installed. Uh, and we can, of course, verify by going into package.json. And sure enough, it's right there. Okay. And so what we want to do is get our body parser working. So var body parser equals require body dash parser. So we're grabbing it. And then what we're going to do is just use it. Okay. Whenever you do app.use, uh, you're basically using something called middleware, which we'll talk about later. But it's basically uh, it's a layer of code that your requests are going to go through before they get down here to our get our responses. Okay, it's you know whether that's making it nice or formatting things. It, it goes through this process before it even gets to uh, us, uh, and that's what we want. We want to make sure everything's properly formatted. So we're going to say use body parser JSON. Okay, it's a it's a function that'll we're passing in there that will um, prep things to be JSON formatted. And then we're going to say app.use body parser.url encoded. And we're going to say extended is equal to false. Now, URL encoded and extended, what's happening here 
uh, is we're saying when the stuff comes in, um, we want to work with arrays and strings, but don't give us anything crazy. Reject anything that's that's not properly formatted. So, okay, so uh, you're, it's typical to see this as well too. And you can of course look this up online. What is extended and URL coded means, and find all the documentation for it. It's very well documented. Okay, so what's going to happen is when a get request comes in. It's going to go through this first, and it's going to make sure that everything is formatted correctly. But this is more typically uh, important uh, when you're posting things. Um, so now that we've got our body parser in, and again, if you don't understand it, it's okay. You can know that you just you, you can just use it, and it's supposed to be there. Uh, and you can of course look up the documentation for this. Okay, so app dot get. When we do a get request, we're sending back the entire list of ingredients. Okay, that sounds right. We should probably just run our server and make sure it's working. So let's say node server.js. So first API running on port 3000. And we just want to go to make sure that it's delivering a list of ingredients. So let's, I'm going to refresh my page, or you can type this in here. And sure enough, okay, we've got eggs, milk, bacon, and frog's legs. This is going to be one fine dinner. So very cool, right? We've, we've hit the server. And the server has sent something back to our client, and our client is rendering it here. Of course, it's JSON. It looks just like our, our code itself here. Uh, and so we know that it's properly formatted. So what I want to do now is I want to talk about post requests. What if we want to post a new ingredient to this list? How do we do that? Well, we can't do it really here from a browser. Uh, the, uh, a browser doesn't really allow post requests in the sense of I can click something or do something here. Uh, in your code on a browser web app, you could of course do that, but we don't have a, an ability here. So what I want to do is I want to get a tool called um, Postman. Okay, supercharge your API workflow. Okay, and this is a free app. You can get it on Mac, Windows, Linux, Chrome. Okay, um, and I already have it on my computer, but go ahead and install this on your computer for now uh, to get going. This is going to allow us to work with uh, web requests. And after you have that installed, I'm just going to pull it up here, Postman. Okay, mine's a little bit messy because I have a bunch of junk on here. But what I want to do is I want to create a post request. So your, your app should look somewhat similar. And just to show you that we can do the same thing that our browser does, okay, we can type in HTTP, localhost, and if I remember right, we were on port 3000. Is that right? Yeah, port 3000. So if I type in port 3000, this should give me a list of my ingredients when I click send. And sure enough, it does. Now, this is the raw version. This is the pretty version here. Okay, this is this is an important tool. You may find other tools that you like better, but this is great to get started with is Postman. And uh, you, don't, you won't typically use your browser to view JSON and web requests. Uh, it's typical to do it in an application like this. Uh, but you can do whatever you want. Uh, but we want to be able to post something, right? We want to post something to the server. Well, how do we do that? Well, if we change this from get to post, um, it now changes the type of request that we have. And any app that you build, uh, the client, when you're sending an HTTP request, it has the options to specify what type of request. So long as you're working with REST, Okay, you can say, I want this to be a get request, a post request, a put request, or a delete request. And your, your, your code library for networking will allow you to do that. And so, we need to first get our code ready to actually handle a post request. All right, and it's not as complicated as you would think. App.post, okay. We can post it at the default route here. Function, it's all looking pretty much the same right now, huh? The request and the response. Okay, put a semicolon here. And uh, let's go ahead and type in var ingredient, okay, is gonna be equal to request.body. So when we post a request from Postman, it's gonna stick it in something called the body. And Express, the app that we're using up here, it knows how to find the body in that incoming request and take it, and then it turns it into a variable that we can use which is in the request.body. It does all that work for us, which is really nice. Finds all the data, you know, puts it in this nice little package here that we can use in the body. So request.body. Okay, we're grabbing the body out of it and sticking it in a variable called ingredients. Okay, and you know, we could do some air checking, air checking here if we wanted to. We could say if, um, let's say if ingredient, um, if there's not an ingredient, or 
if ingredient.text is equal to empty, okay, if it's an empty string, what do we want to do? We can use something new here. We can say res. Typically, when we do a response to send, it's sending a status of 200. And 200 means it's okay. 200, 201, it means, yeah, okay. If you've ever seen that, you know, 201 response, it means that everything worked out the way it should. Um, and we could still send a 200 here, but then send back an error message. But I think what's more appropriate is probably some type of error status. So we can say response dot status. And in the parentheses, I'm just going to put a 500, like an internal server error. Hey, we couldn't find it or database couldn't find it. Okay. And then we'll say dot send. All right. And then what I'm going to do is just send an error message. I'm going to say, uh, in fact, we can make it even more elegant by actually putting an error key in here so your client knows how to look for the dot error property. Ah. And we can say error. And we can say your ingredient must have a you know, name or must have text, okay? Must have a, must have text. We'll just say text because that's the name of our property. Okay, so if there's not an ingredient, meaning if it's null or undefined, or if ingredient dot text, so we're grabbing the dot text property, is an empty string, uh, then let's send back an error. Okay, ooh, some nice little error handling here. Okay, pretty cool. Else, it was successful, right? So what do we do now? Well, We've got our new ingredient. All we probably need to do is add it to this ingredients list. That is pretty cool. So we're just going to say ingredients.push ingredient, pushing it to the array. And then just for sake of consistency, we can say res.status 200 send. Remember, the dot send typically sends 200 automatically. Uh, but we're just explicitly writing it here just to show you that you can, you can write a success status here as well, too. And what I like to do is just and what a lot of APIs do is send back the new ingredient that was just posted to make sure that everything's working the way it should. Okay, so um, we're going to send back that same ingredient that was sent up just to say, hey, this ingredient was posted. So pretty cool. So incoming response for a post, um, and there needs to be a body, request that body, uh, and then we say if there's not an ingredient, if it's undefined, or if it's null, or if the text is an empty string. Uh, in fact, we should probably make this triple equals. And we are working in JavaScript, of course. And uh, otherwise, send it back a 500 error if those things, are, if it's that way. And then otherwise, we were successful. Let's push it to the array, um, and then send back that same ingredient. Or we could, of course, actually send back the entire ingredients array if we wanted to, which is a good response to send as well too. Depends on what the, the what your boss wants or what you want to do for your app. So we're almost there. The only thing we need to do now, two things, is we need to reset our server. Okay. Control C to kill it and run it again. And then over in Postman, let's find our Postman. We just need to run a request. So what I'd like to do is I'm going to do a new tab here. And we're going to change this to post. And I'm going to say HTTP local host 3000. OK, so that's the normal URL. Now, how do we, how do we post something? Well. What we're going to do is we're going to go over here to our body. And you could post it right here, like an ID and a value, key value. And if your server accepts form data, that'll work. And we could set it up to do that. But I don't actually ever typically do that. Uh, what I like to do is go into raw and then change it to JSON. That way I can actually type it out exactly as any client might have it. And it just makes me feel more comfortable. Um, so I'm going to actually type in raw JSON here. And what we're going to do is add a new ingredient. So ID, and we're going to just you know, pretend that the client gave us this new ID. All right, with a comma, and the text is going to be, let's say, cherries. Okay. Now, in JSON, of course, the both the keys and the values will be in quotes here. Uh, this is this is the JSON format. This is not JavaScript object. This is not a JavaScript object, although it looks very close. Uh, when it's in JSON, everything has to have quotes on it. The numbers wouldn't have quotes. If if it was just a number, we would like, you know, if I said number. And it would just be like that, you know. That's fine, but that doesn't have to be in strings. Um, but the words do, and the and the value, keys do as well. Oops, don't want to save that. Okay, so we've got our raw. It's JSON application .json, and we're posting to this URL. Okay, so if all goes well, okay. In fact, let's just for fun, we'll get our browser open one more time. What I want to do. Okay, so let's run this again. So. Clearly, there's four ingredients here, right? 
So let's do the post request. Res is not defined. Um, it gave us an error. So we probably wrote something wrong in our code and you probably spotted it and didn't even tell me. Uh, yeah, right here. I'm so used to writing res, uh, res instead of response. Okay, it just it couldn't find it. So let's try this again. Let's run the post. Oh, we need to restart our server. That's another rookie mistake. If you don't restart your server, it won't uh, it won't load up. Okay, let's try this again. Let's go to our browser. Make sure we only have four ingredients. Refresh the page. So four ingredients. Let's send the post request. Okay, it sent back now five items. One, two, three, four, five. And if I refresh the get request, there are now five items. So congratulations, you've actually written your very first post request. And what's happening here is the request is coming in. Uh, we've specified it as a post. Uh, Express knows what it, how to handle that. Uh, that's why we have the same URL here, and it's and uh, each one does a different thing based on what we specify from the client. This is a post request or a get request. The request comes in, so we grab the body. So when when we were in Postman, and we wrote that code here in the body, okay, that is what's going in the body property. What we wrote here is, is directly being translated and sent up the wire and it's stuck here in the body. And uh, let's make sure our error code actually works. So let's go ahead and do another request with Postman. This time let's make it an empty string to make sure our error handling is working okay. Error, your ingredient must have text. Ah, like I hope things are starting to click. I can control, it goes back to the client, okay? Pretty cool stuff. And a lot. this is the kind of code you'd write, right? So when you're posting something to an API, if you've ever done any type of development before and you post something up, uh, the server actually has to write code to make sure that it's valid, uh, that the developer does. So we know the error handling's work. It works right here. If there's no errors, if it all looks good, we just push it to the array and we send back the array, which is why when I refresh this page every time, we're now getting five elements. Now, something important to know. Let's kill our server and reload it. And then let's refresh this page. We're now back to four items. We lost cherries, and why? Well, that's because our code is right here in this in this array. If the server goes down, we lose it all. This is not persistent, okay? That's why databases are incredibly handy, and that's why they're important. It persists data permanently. And so normally, this would be stored in a database. And then we would fetch it, and it would always be there. But because it's not, it gets refreshed. Uh, so. You've learned a lot. There's a lot going on here, but you're making great progress. And even though Node can get a little more complex, this is really a, a huge portion of what you'll be doing. It will be very common to write code like this. You may just move things into different files and stuff, but this code here is very common. So uh, we're making great progress, and it's not that hard to start building your very own uh, APIs. And what I personally like about Node is it's it's all very cut and dry. You pick what you want, meaning our file is very small here. We decided to use this package and this package, and that's it. Now, with other languages like and frameworks like Ruby on Rails and Python and Django, okay, uh, those come pre or like even .NET. You know, they come pre-built with everything you could possibly think of, and it does so much under the hood. So, you know, we could possibly get an API running up in a few lines of code like this, but we wouldn't know what's going on under the hood. Uh, because there's so much happening. They do everything for you, and those frameworks are massive and have a, a very strong learning curve. Whereas with Node, it's pick and choose. Now, some people like the fact that those things do it for you because you don't have to think about it. Um, but it's also really important to, to be able to have the ability and flexibility to do what you want um, without the bulk or overhead, or, and Node is just very lightweight. So really good stuff here. Uh, that's it for now. Uh, more to come. Mark Price at devslopes.com. See you later.